Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. Coming off a very solid weekend. Uh, very busy day today. Digging straight into today's Q&A. This is with Taya. And Taya had a question that comes up a lot when we're talking about elbows. And this has to do with ulnar nerve. Uh, issues, some mobility issues, um, some extensibility issues, but all of this comes down to position and then adaptations that may be associated with those positions. So whenever we're talking about something that's in the distal extremity, we always have to be concerned with our proximal orientations and we have to work our way out. So shoulder girdle matters, elbow orientation matters, wrist orientation, and of course the hand, especially with ulnar nerve, because she describes two different scenarios in regards to ulnar nerve symptoms, um, both of which can be uh, determined in regards to the greatest influence as to where we'll see the most tension. And so we can use our neurodynamic test under these circumstances to help us identify where that may be. And then that can help us drive our decision making in regards to which orientation has the greatest influence. So thank you, Taya. Great question. Lots of information in this video for those of you that may be dealing with medial elbow symptoms, ulnar nerve symptoms, or even wrist symptoms. If you would like to participate in a 15 minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com askbillhartman at gmail.com. Please put 15 minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it. We'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Monday and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Wonder Um, My question is regarding the ulnar nerve hypermobility. Uh-huh. I just have a client that has a problem with the ulnar nerve, especially the sensation in the hand. Okay. So I just wanted to run my thought process uh, by you, just so if I understand this whole thing correctly. Yeah. So when you have this uh, issue, you have the whole humerus oriented into ER, as well as the upper forearm while the uh, lower part of the forearm is in pronated uh, pronation. So in this case, the pistol test is positive. Yeah, and the- um, hey. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> keep going, sorry, you're fine. So this occipital tunnel gets uh, more flat, yep. which puts more pressure on the ulnar nerve, uh, nerve when the arm is flexing, okay. Okay, so the the with the hypermobility, are they are they sensing that the nerve is is clicking across the elbow? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, one one client, yes. The other one, no. The other one just feels the sensation it, like here and in the hand. Okay, because so so now you're gonna have to look. So you got to look at your hand orientation as well because. Um, I could have the, the, the issue might be the differential between the hand and the, and the wrist, right? Which is mm -hmm. um, the, where, the, where the nerve runs through the, the tunnel of Guyan, okay? So the tunnel of Guyan is through here. Um, and so as, as it goes through there, there might be like a, a curve that it has to go around, which can cause some of the compressive strategy that would cause, is it just like numbness and things or is it pain? Yeah, yeah. It's just numbness? Yeah. Okay. So like if the tingling sensation. Yeah. If it's, if it's just he, if it's just here, then you've got a hand to wrist orientation. It doesn't mean you have to clean. You you have to ignore this. It just means that it, it might be more local here. Whereas up here, you've got the the shape change, where the where the uh, the the nerve comes comes through the uh, the cubital tunnel there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, you might have you might have two different representations here. You're going to have to clarify that the the hand position and then the the humerus elbow position in both cases, okay? And you may have to do the same thing. I don't know, okay? But but the thing I want you to rec recognize is like where do you have the biggest differential? Might be where you spend more of your time. So if this it's... is a bony bend, this is a bony bend yeah. here. This is this could just be like a relationship of of hand pronation to the to the wrist orientation. Yeah, that's what I wanted to check. So if it's like the problem in the wrist, just yeah. means that the hand is more pronated relatively to the forearm. Most likely. Okay. How can you tell? With the apple test. 
Okay, so, so those tests are really, really helpful, but there's a cool little test that you can actually, actually identify where the greatest tension in the nerve is. This. Aha, uh -huh. very good, yeah. perfect. Okay, so, but what I would say, do you know how to do, do the, uh, the, the neuron dynamic test yourself on them? Do you, know how to, I, do you know how to execute the test segmentally? Segmentally, I just have to check probably deflection first and then like this. Okay. If they already if you, have, the if you have them do it actively, you will not be able to tell where the where the greatest tension on the nerve is. I know if deflection is in the elbow, it's the uh, the occipital occipital tunnel, if I'm not mistaken. But if it's but if they don't feel the sensation, just flexing. Okay. You have to execute the test on them. Okay. Because you'll be able to feel where the tension increases as you're executing the test. So you wanna look at the ulnar nerve neurodynamic test. Okay? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to be able to execute it because you'll be able to feel the resistance at the elbow. You'll be able to feel the resistance at the wrist. And then you can correlate that to um, number one, the tension that you're feeling and number two, the symptoms that they may have at the time because you need a before and an after test other than the symptom. Because if they have some sensitivity, you might be successful with your reorientation, but they still may have symptoms. Nerves are funny, they take a while to change, right? Okay, so regarding the presentation that leads to this uh, occurrence of sensations. So the first step would be to untwist the uh, the arm, oh, the uh, anterior expansion. You need, you need axial position, you need shoulder position, you need elbow position, you need wrist and hand position. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, so I'm guessing first you need AP expansion and then. So rely on, are, are you measuring the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. So rely on your test to guide what you need. Chances are you're going to have ER orientation approximately here. Okay. Chances are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're probably right that you're going to, you're going to need both AP expansion. Okay. But again, trust your measurements. Don't, don't guess if you're, if you're measuring directly, you should be able to determine what you need to do first. Okay, because if, if you reorient this to allow the AP expansion and you get your ERs and IRs back proximally, this might be gone. Okay, but if it's not? Then you keep going, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering since the uh, distal forearm is in pronation, so is it like right to assume that I would drive supination? and humorous internal rotation? Um, at some point. Okay. <laughs> at some point, okay. Your first goal is to get everything to match, okay? If I'm oriented into ER, if I have humoral ER, if I have proximal radius ER, I wanna turn everything into IR first. So I get IR, 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 IR. So now it all matches. Now I go back and I turn it back over and now I teach them how to supinate at the same time and, and ER at the same time. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Much easier to compress everything into IR first and then orient them back into e, to ER. And just uh, as I was watching also your video on the uh, elbow valgus presentation, is this the same as the uh, ulnar nerve hypermobility presentation? No. Okay. Um, let, me, let, me, let me take a baby step back. Yes and no. It okay. starts that way. And then you get more ER on top of it. So then the whole system tries to orient into ER. That's typically, okay. Create, okay, I get it. typically okay. going to create the, the ulnar nerve stuff. Jen, and, you see this all the time, right? Yeah. Jen Marcello, was, you probably see the ulnar nerve stuff all the time, right? 
with the pitchers? It's not as often as you would think. At least, and maybe it was just randomly my population, but yeah. Because I've seen like I don't know, I don't know how many pitchers I've seen with like ulnar transpose. Where they do the ulnar transposition. Typically, like you'll you'll see that in combo with the TJ. Yeah. Well. Yeah all the medial elbow stress, right? It's just going to bend everything and then kapow, right? Because it, again, it's just an expansion strategy in the space. You took a space that was shaped like 90 degrees and you just open it up a little bit and now you got an ulnar nerve that can slide all the way around and that's what they're feeling. It doesn't pop out, it just slides around, you know? So does that help you, Tam? Yeah.